We're discussing the very best offensive players in the history of the Buffalo Bills today on Locked on Bills. You are Locked on Bills, your daily Buffalo Bills podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Bills Mafia? It's Joe Marino, author of Go Bills and Buffalo's Run, also the co-host of the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast, and I am your host of Locked On Bills. want to thank you for making Locked On Bills your first listen every day, and a big welcome and shout-out to our everydayers. You know who you are. Those of you who never miss a single episode, I appreciate y'all being here very, very much. I'd also like to invite you to subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more as the playoffs wind down. The sports stop sporting like we want them to, but this summer FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a booster bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Just visit FanDuel.com to get started. Well, folks, welcome in. Very excited for today. Every offseason, I try to find a way to talk about something historical with the Buffalo Bills. And this year, I'd like to do this through the lens of building a Mount Rushmore for every offensive position. So my objective is to deliver to you who I think the four best players are at every offensive position in the history of the Buffalo Bills. And one of my favorite things about doing these types of conversations through the lens of Mount Rushmore is that it forces you to pick four, not five, not six, four. And that made for some very challenging decisions. And so I have some honorable mentions that I will deliver along the way, but I want to focus in primarily on who I think the four best players are in the history of the Buffalo Bills at every offensive position. Now, one thing that I will mention is that I am focusing entirely on what the players did in Buffalo relative to the history of the Buffalo Bills. So guys like Marshawn Lynch, Terrell Owens, Jason Peters, you're not going to find them in this. This is what these guys did for the Buffalo Bills relative to what's been done in the history of the Buffalo Bills. So let's do it. We'll do quarterbacks and running backs first. Then we'll do wide receivers and tight end. Then we'll do the offensive line, and I'll be honest with you, that's where I had the hardest decisions was the offensive line, so make sure you don't miss that part of our conversation. But let's do it. We'll start with quarterback. I think quarterback is really cut and dry. And I'll give you the players. They're not necessarily in any order. Just know that, right? I'm just giving you the players. We'll start with Josh Allen. I think Josh Allen is absolutely already deserving to be on the Bills' all-time offensive Mount Rushmore for quarterbacks. I think you can make a case that while he may have, he may not be the most accomplished quarterback in the history of the Buffalo Bills, probably the best one, most talented, the one that you would pick if you can have any Buffalo Bills quarterback in the history of the team and you could have them in their prime, you're going to pick Josh Allen. He's rewriting all the history books for the Buffalo Bills. It's only a matter of time before he holds every record. And he certainly chipped away at that significantly already in his career. So Josh Allen on the list. Jim Kelly, of course. Bills quarterback, 1986 through 1996. NFL, uh, Pro Football Hall of Famer. Bills Wall of Famer. His numbers retired by the organization. The Bills all-time leading passer, five-time Pro Bowler. You may have heard, but he led the Bills to four consecutive Super Bowl appearances. You can't tell the history of the Buffalo Bills without Jim Kelly being at the top of that conversation. The next one is Joe Ferguson, Bills quarterback, 1973 to 1984, on the Bills Wall of Fame. In fact, he's got the most starts in the history of the organization at quarterback. Joe Ferguson. Nobody started more games at quarterback than Joe Ferguson. Number two in franchise history for passing yards and passing touchdowns. Led the league in passing yards in 1977. Led the league in passing touchdowns in 1975. Joe Ferguson 
is probably one of my favorite all-time Buffalo Bills, reading about him, learning about him, uh, understanding his play style. He felt like he was a bit ahead of his time and probably an underappreciated player in the history of the organization due to the team not having a lot of success with him as a quarterback. But um, I'm not sure that was really his fault. Uh, a great run and um, kind of a legend, a legend in so many different ways for uh, what he's done on and off the field. Jack Kemp, the last one here, Bills quarterback 1962 to 1969 on the wall of fame. Uh, quarterback the Bills to consecutive AFL championships, 1964-1965. Jack Kemp, the starting quarterback. He was the league MVP in 1965, seven-time All-Star. And uh, one of my favorite things about Jack Kemp is that his 40 career rushing touchdowns ranks fifth all-time among quarterbacks. Uh, he's only behind Cam Newton, Josh Allen, Steve Young, and Jalen Hurts. He was pretty recently um, the you know like number two until Cam Newton topped him. Uh, Steve Young, of course, held it for a while. He was number one until Steve Young came along, then Cam Newton then Josh Allen, and now recently Jalen Hurts has joined the ranks. My honorable mentions at quarterback, Ryan Fitzpatrick, Tyrod Taylor, Doug Flutie, um, nobody else. I mean, none of those honorable mentions come close to entering the actual Mount Rushmore of Jim Kelly, Josh Allen, Joe Ferguson, and Jack Kemp. Let's talk running backs. Got four of those for you. O.J. Simpson, of course. Bills running back 1969 to 1977, NFL MVP in 1973, first player in the history of the league to top 2,000 rushing yards in a single season, five-time Pro Bowl selection, and um, led the NFL in rushing four seasons while a member of the Buffalo Bills. Of course, on the Wall of Fame, 10,000 rushing yards during his time with the Bills, number two all-time in franchise history. Behind Thurman Thomas, who's also, of course, on the running back Mount Rushmore for the Buffalo Bills, 1988 to 1999, was the NFL MVP and Offensive Player of the Year, 1991, five-time Pro Bowl selection, was part of the NFL's 1990s All-Decade team, of course, a Pro Football Hall of Famer, a Bills Wall of Famer, and is number 34, retired by the organization, and of course, he's the Bills' all-time leading rusher. He's also scored the most touchdowns of any player in the history of the Buffalo Bills, tying, actually, Andre Reid. They both had 87 for a share of the all-time lead for touchdowns scored. So O.J. Simpson, Thurman Thomas, that's, that's real easy to get that done. Then I go to Fred Jackson, Bills running back 2007 to 2014, do-everything player. Third all-time in team history for rushing yards. Eight seasons with the team. Averaged over 1,000 yards from scrimmage during his time in Buffalo per season. And a fun fact here, in 2009, Fred Jackson became the first player in the history of the NFL to accumulate 1,000 rushing yards and 1,000 kick return yards during a single season. One of uh, the all-time greats from the drought era. A guy that... Um, Man, such an interesting path to to becoming an NFL player. You kind of wonder if he played on better teams and if he was discovered a little bit sooner what uh, the full body of work would look like for Fred Jackson, but clearly a, a member of this running back, Bills, Mount Rushmore. Last running back, Joe Cribbs, uh, 1980 through 1983. Then he missed 1984 with a contract dispute. Came back in 1985, so five seasons with the Bills. He went to three Pro Bowls, collected 1,300-yard rushing games, had three 1,000 rushing yard seasons, and he ranks fourth all-time in Bills history for rushing yards. So a brief stint with the Bills, but he did a lot in a short period of time. So the running back, Mount Rushmore, O.J. Simpson, Thurman Thomas, Fred Jackson, Joe Cribbs, honorable mentions, Cookie Gilchrist, LaShawn McCoy, and Travis Henry. So there's quarterbacks and running backs. We'll do wide receivers and tight ends on the other side of it. So be sure to stick with me. I love sports. I love them so much. I never want them to stop. But as the playoffs wind down, we get fewer games and the sports aren't sportsing like we want them to. But FanDuel lets me keep the sports going whenever I want. All I have to do is open the app and dream up 
bets anytime that I'm in the mood. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a booster bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. They've got some fun bills, futures bets, some over-unders for production during the 2024 regular season. They have James Cook. They have his rushing yards set at 875 and a half. I feel like the over is going to hit there. They have Josh Allen's passing yards at a measly 3,750 and a half. Smash the over there, folks. Also smash the over on Dalton Kincaid. They have his receiving yards set at 775 and a half. So you can check out that and a whole lot more over at FanDuel. So make the most of your summer at FanDuel.com. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. All right, in this block, we're talking wide receiver and tight end. And folks, I'd love to hear from you. If you're watching this on YouTube, leave a comment. Let me know what you agree with, what you don't agree with, how you would build these offensive Mount Rushmores. Would love to have some interaction on this podcast. Uh, it's just my opinion, right? This is how I see it, but I know that there's a lot of people that um, might see it differently, and I'd love to hear from you as well. Let's do wide receiver, and these are a lot of modern players, but I just – it makes sense. Of course, you start with Andre Reed, 1985 to 1999. Bill's all-time leading receiver, Pro Football Hall of Famer, Bill's Wall of Famer, selected to seven Pro Bowls. And of course, he's tied with Thurman Thomas for the most touchdowns scored in team history with 87 yards after catch over the middle. Andre Reed was a dude. Eric Molds, Bill's receiver, 96 to 2005. Two-time Pro Bowler, over 9,000 receiving yards in 10 seasons with the Bills, number two in franchise history. And fun fact on Eric Molds, in 2002, he became the first player in Bills history to have 100 catches in a single season. Lee Evans, also part of this Mount Rushmore on offense for a wide receiver to me. 2004 to 2010, big play receiver. Uh, there was a, a a time where when you talked about like receiving touchdowns of 40 yards or more, I mean, Lee Evans was that dude for a long time in the NFL where he kind of led the league in terms of big play ability at wide receiver. He set the Bills rookie record with nine touchdowns as a rookie. And again, his quarterback situation was so crappy in Buffalo. I always wondered watching Lee Evans, well, what would this guy be? if he had Tom Brady or if he had Peyton Manning or if he had Phillip Rivers or something like that, Drew Brees, the guy's numbers will be off the charts. He just played with bad quarterbacks for 10 years in Buffalo or however long, two thousand six years, 2004 to 2010. But despite all that, number three all-time in franchise history for receiving yards and touchdown receptions. So Andre Reid, Eric Moulds, Lee Evans, and the last spot goes to Stephon Diggs. Bills receiver for the last four seasons. And I think that Stephon Diggs from 2020 through 2023 had the greatest four year stretch of wide receiver production in franchise history. I don't think it's debatable. And I know that the ending really sucked. There's no doubt about it. I'm annoyed with Stephon Diggs for sure. But you cannot deny that this man delivered the greatest four year stretch of wide receiver production in the history of the team. Four seasons in Buffalo. He checks out fourth all time in receiving yards, receptions, and receiving touchdowns. My honorable mentions at wide receiver Albert DeBunyan, Stevie Johnson. Moving on to tight end, and the Bills do not have a robust history of really good tight ends. But there are, of course, four that I have ready for you today. Ernie Warlick, let's start with that guy, 1960 through, 1962 excuse me, to 1965, a starter for four seasons, a pro bowler for four seasons, was a big part of the back-to-back -back AFL championship teams, scored the first touchdown in the 1965 AFL championship game, and um, more known more for his blocking efforts, which mattered a ton, obviously, in an era of football where they ran the ball all the time. But even despite that, in four seasons, 90 catches and um, averaged over 17 yards per reception. So a lot of big play production whenever he got a chance to catch a football. Pete Metzelars, probably the 
the leader here, right? The the best tight end in Bill's history is probably Pete Metzlar's 1985 to 1994. Certainly in terms of production, it's his. He's the Bill's all-time leader among tight ends for receptions, receiving yards, and receiving touchdowns. Then I get to Jay Reimersma. Uh, Jay Reimersma, 1996 to 2002. He had a lot of injuries while he was a member of the Buffalo Bills. But despite that, number two in franchise history for receiving yards as a tight end, appeared in 90 games, 64 starts, and over 200 catches, over 2,300 yards, and 20 receiving touchdowns. This next one, you're probably going to raise an eyebrow. But I challenge you to give me a player that has a better case. I'm going with Dawson Knox. Again, the Bills don't have a very robust history with tight ends. But Dawson Knox, second most receiving touchdowns in franchise history for tight ends. In fact, he's only three behind Pete Metzler's. And check this out. He's three behind Pete Metzler's in 87 less games. It's only a matter of time. Dawson Knox is going to have the most receiving touchdowns for a tight end in the history of the team. Oh, by the way, he's got the second most postseason receiving touchdowns in franchise history with six. So maybe you think that's crazy. I don't think it is. I think that data that I just provided gives him one heck of a case to very clearly be on this list. My honorable mention for tight ends, Paul Costa, very similar uh, career with the Bills as Ernie Warlick being part of those AFL championship teams, more of a blocker, a couple of productive receiving seasons. He played longer than Ernie Warlick, uh, but he didn't quite get the accolades of Ernie Warlick, who was a four-time Pro Bowler in four seasons with the Bills. So there's the wide receivers and tight ends coming up. We're talking offensive line, and as I said in the open, this was by far the most challenging to sort out. So we'll do that here on the other side of it. Be sure to stick with me. I certainly hope you're enjoying this stroll down memory lane, hearing some names that maybe you haven't in a while, maybe learning some things about the all-time greats as it relates to the Buffalo Bills. Now, I think a lot of this has been kind of easy for me to do. Offensive line was very, very, very difficult, and especially on the interior offensive line. I, I mean, I call it impossible because I think there's five guys that you have to have. I don't think you can reduce it to four. I don't think you can. And so I'm taking my own liberties here, and I'm going to give you five interior offensive linemen because, honestly, that's just how it has to be. I think you start with Kent Hall, 1986 to 1996, Bills Wall of Famer, three-time Pro Bowl selection, started 169 games across 11 seasons, and his role for this Bills offensive line with Jim Kelly as the center to operate the no-huddle K-gun offense was huge. I mean, a big part of, the I think, the story of football stems from the Bills and that that offense, how they ran it, and Kent Hull's role in, in it, right? I mean, it's a big deal. I think a lot of the modern center stuff that you see today, Kent Hull was the, the guy, right? The catalyst for all of that. So Kent Hull has to be on it. Jim Richter has to be on this list. 1980 to 1993, Bills Wall of Famer. Left guard, 167 games started, two-time Pro Bowler. He's played in the most games of any offensive lineman in franchise history with 203. Joe DeLamalier, got to put him on here. 1973 to 1979, Bills Wall of Famer, Pro Football Hall of Famer, six-time Pro Bowl selection. And, I mean, you talk about the dominant rushing offenses that the Bills had in the 70s. I mean, Joe DeLamalier, Reggie McKenzie, big part of that. Obviously a pro football Hall of Famer. Billy Shaw, you got to include him. 1961 to 1969, Bills Wall of Famer, pro football Hall of Famer. Here's a fun fact on Billy Shaw. Only player ever inducted into the pro football Hall of Fame without ever playing in the NFL. 
Of course, his career ended uh, just before the AFL and the NFL merged. Eight-time Pro Bowl selection and, I mean, Pro Football Hall of Famer. He, he was a dude. And I think you have to include Reuben Brown. So I, you tell me how, who I'm supposed to leave off between Ken Hall, Jim Richter, Joe DeLamalier, Billy Shaw, and Reuben Brown. Reuben Brown, 95 to 2003. One of the best guards in the league for a long time. I mean, it was like clockwork. This guy was a pro bowler. 136 games, started nine-time pro bowler with the Buffalo Bills. I mean, it's an unbelievable run. My honorable mention, Reggie McKenzie. But I had to do five. I had to do five when it comes to interior offensive line. And there's other guys that I could probably bring up and have a pretty good case. But I thought that I already stretched it to five, and my honorable mention being Reggie McKinsey. Offensive tackle was up next. And I think offensive tackle in some ways is like tight end, where there's some really good players, but not quite the resume of talent that you see from the Bills at running back or wide receiver, quarterback, or interior offensive line. All right, offensive tackle, uh, Joe Devlin. Let's start there, 1976 to 1989. 179 games, 13 seasons as the Bills' right tackle and um, has appeared in the fourth most amount of games in team history. And again, another player that was on the team kind of during a dark age of Bills football but had one heck of a career, longevity, you know, like 13, 13 seasons, 179 starts. He's a, a big a pillar, right, for a long time for that offensive line. Stu Barber, 1961 to 1969. He actually started his career as a linebacker for the Bills, and then he switched to offensive tackle. And he was an eight-year starter and was a Pro Bowl selection five times in eight seasons after switching over from linebacker. Then let's go to Will Wolford. We have to have some representation here for, like, the tackle position during the Super Bowl run, and I know that I don't think he was the su- the left tackle for the last one, but three of them, and of course, 1986 to 1992. Three-time Pro Bowl selection was the, the blindside protector for Jim Kelly for 102 games across seven seasons with the Bills. And the last one, I'm going Deion Dawkins, 2017 uh, through now. 106-game starter across seven seasons. He's made the last three Pro Bowls. And I think what stands out to me about Deion Dawkins is I think very clearly the Bills' offenses that we've witnessed over the last four or five years have been the best in franchise history. Deion Dawkins has been your left tackle. And I think he's, I mean, he's coming off his best season. And I'm excited to see how he finishes his career. And I think he's got a bunch of really good seasons left in the tank. Honorable mentions at offensive tackle. John Fina, and Howard Ballard. So there you have it. My Mount Rushmore for the Buffalo Bills at every offensive position. You'll never guess what we're going to do tomorrow. The same thing, but for the defensive side of the football. So that should be a lot of fun. Don't miss it. Make sure that you're subscribed. Would love it if you took a second to rate, review, and share the podcast. Have a great rest of your day. Go Bills. And I look forward to catching up with you again real soon.